What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm D Knight. Let's make some moves. Welcome back to the Barons franchise, everybody, where we are starting in the off season of season two. So we had a very successful season, but we ended up getting run out of town by the Philadelphia 76ers as they swept us in the Eastern Conference Finals. What are we going to do for an encore? I mean, this team is only in its second year of existence, and we've already made the Eastern Conference Finals. Very, very interesting. It's going to be very, very tough to continue this success for sure, because now if we want to progress, we have to get to the NBA Finals, which is going to be very tough. Now, me and Coach Doe, we had a nice conversation about what we need to be doing over this offseason. It's going to be pretty tough. Adams is no longer a Baron currently as his contract is up, so it's going to be a little bit tough to re-sign him. Bridges, Monk, they're pretty much gone. We've also added Van Vliet and Looney to our trading block. See if we get any interest, but I think with our possibility of moving Cabin Gelly to center and Jalen Smith over to power forward, I think Looney is expendable whether we re-sign Adams or not because I do like Dane Tiggs as our center, our second center, really. So I think that is a good idea. But we also have to resign him. We have to resign Baylor. If we want Williamson, we have to resign him because we actually signed them to only one year deals last year. And all of them kind of contributed and produced. You know, now Hal is going to be our backup point guard because he played very, very well. So we'll, we'll have to see exactly what happens. We have a lot of really moves to kind of make and decisions to make, and it's going to be pretty tough. So let's take a look at the player retirement so far. So Vince Carter is finally done at the age of 44. Zach Randolph, Pau Gasol, Kyle Korver, Trevor Ariza, J.R. Smith, Nene Livingston, Bellinelli. Come on, cross your fingers. Cross your fingers for Ben Simmons to retire this year. I don't think it's going to happen. Shame. <laughs> and then a couple guys down here at the bottom. Okay, so nothing too crazy there. Let's continue to move on. Staff retirements. So the only staff retirement is Bob Weiss, who was an assistant coach, but he actually was not on a team at all. Okay, Hall of Fame inductees, what do we got? Vince Carter, all right, he's gonna be a Hall of Famer. I mean, rightfully so. The guy did play in three generations, so good for him. League meetings, what do we have? Okay, change shot clock to 35, everybody said no. Rookie wage scale rejected and opposing teams what are the bonus rejected change the number of fouls rejected and change the time offense is given oh yeah oh those were terrible so glad we got past that league of uh, realignment well there if you guys want to see exactly where we are obviously the atlantic with those 76ers we could move people around. We could add teams if we wanted to. I don't think this year we are going to do it. So let's just keep on moving on. So draft lottery time. Let's see who ends up with the first pick. So it looks like the San Antonio Spurs will have the top pick with Trailblazers being second. The Kings third. Pacers fourth. Thunder are fifth. Pelicans six. And then the Pelicans have another one at seven. Hornets eight. Supersonics ninth and tenth for the Suns. We are going to be picking 31st, not a good spot. Kind of think that we're going to be going either small forward or power forward, just to kind of look for some bench guys. But I haven't necessarily found any that have stood out. And the ones that have stood out are mock draft before us. So we're not, we might not be able to get them. This draft might be a little bit boring. So now we head into the staff signing period. Now Coach Doe, you're gonna be happy. Our trainer was only signed for a year. We even had him, but our CFO is also gone currently. So we're gonna to have to pony up and pretty much pay somebody there. 
but I think Trainer is going to be our top one here. Let's see who we have available. We have Sean Navarro, who's training as A, potential as C, but nobody else really that stands off the mark. Yeah, Rush could get better, but I think we got to go after this top guy here, and he's got nine offers, so <laughs> might be a little bit tough, but I mean, let's put a four year. Let's bump it up pretty good here. I know I'm probably overpaying, but I told that I told Coach Doe that we would go heavy after a trainer because he thinks that is the most important. So we're going to make a four year, $350,000 offer to Sean Navarro, and he will let us know. I think we will kind of wait for his decision before we offer somebody else because, really, I mean, we got him. And if we don't go with him, Howard will probably be off the board. And then we could possibly look at possibly Ryan Keith. Yeah, he's a B minus, but that potential makes him just a little bit better. So I don't mind that. And then CFO wise, nobody's really going out. Our CFO was not very good at all. Let's see, where is he at exactly? There he is, Ronnie Freeman, C plus, C plus. So we're actually gonna go for the top guy here who has, oh, 11. Did I not see that guy? Okay. So he does have 11 offers. Mm, you know what? Go all in. This is what we need to do. Bump his salary up a little bit. His interest is pretty high, so let's do that. And let's advance a couple days and see if we can get somebody. So both of our guys actually did sign. Jason Taylor at four year, 4.8 million, is going to be joining us on the business aspect, which is great. And then we got the best trainer he wanted to come to, Baltimore, I love it, four year, 1.4 million. Good training there, A training, C potential is a little bit scary, but we can continue to move on throughout the off season. Now that we're on the final day, I did kind of want to go over some of our coaching staff, which right now I don't think we need to be going away from whatsoever. I mean, Owen Masters as the assistant GM is pretty solid at ABC. Mylon Mack, maybe not the greatest, but I mean, he's led us to the Eastern Conference Finals. We can't get rid of him. I mean, second year, he's already done that. Same thing with Michael Odom here. Maybe in two years, maybe we start falling behind a little bit and we're gonna have to make a move. And then our head scout is actually not too bad as well with some B pluses. So our coaching staff, we're gonna be keeping around for a little bit because they are pretty good. Well, not in the ratings, but at least the basketball on the court. And maybe it's all me, the GM. <laughs> Probably not, but they're at least leading us to progressive heights and made us get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I think we're fine with that. And now we have a couple of scoutings and draft combines, pre-draft workouts. So we're going to cut this out, but I will see you guys when we get to the NBA draft. So now it is time to enter the NBA draft. Remember, we have some late round picks here, but I think we are going to be good enough to yeah. at least get a good bench power forward or even small forward. Jonathan Kuminga is going to be the first guy off the board. So good pick there by the Spurs. He was kind of the top on everybody's draft list. And now we go to the Trailblazers, and who are they going to pick? Jalen Green out of USC. And now we go to the Kings. The Kings gonna grab anytime now. Terrence Clark, six foot seven, out of Kentucky, a shooting guard at six foot seven. That's pretty good. I'm actually kind of surprised that Cunningham hasn't gone yet. So the Pacers are gonna take Cade Cunningham. Six foot eight point guard out of Oklahoma State. Figured he would actually be top three. And now the Thunder are going to pick Jalen Johnson out of Duke. Six foot eight point guard. Let's keep it moving. The Pelicans have two picks here. And who are they going to select? Zaire Williams out of USC, the six foot eight shooting guard. Okay. So far, none of our guys that we are really even looking at have gone, but. That's because we weren't going top 15 in anything. 
Then they're going to take Brandon Boston Jr., six foot seven, out of Kentucky, as shooting guard as well. And now the Charlotte Hornets. Who are they going to take? They're going to take power forward Evan Mobley, seven foot, out of USC. I did scout him, but it actually did say that he might have some injury history. So I wasn't really too interested. He goes super early here. The Supersonics are going to take shooting guard Keon Johnson, six foot six, out of Tennessee. Pretty good selection for them, but you can see the Sonics have kind of dropped a little bit after the first season. The Suns are going to take point guard Caleb Love, six foot three, out of North Carolina. Okay, I see that. I see that. Let's keep going. The Raptors. Who are you going to select? Point guard DJ Carton out of Ohio State, 6'2". Okay. So some smaller point guards are still around nowadays. And then the Bucks are going to take center Armandi Baquet, 6'10", out of North Carolina. Okay, you can tell me all about them. The Timberwolves, who are they going to select? Oh, they have made a trade. The T-Wolves are going to trade for DeMontis Sabonis. And I'm sorry, they're going to give up DeMontis Sabonis. And they're going to get a 13th overall in second round. Or no, I read that backwards because I don't know what I'm doing. 2021 first round, they traded to the Cavs with the second round for DeMontis Sabonis. So now the Cavs are on the clock because I don't understand those trade screens sometimes. They're going to take power forward Scotty Barnes, 6'8", out of Florida State. Okay, so that's pretty good selection there for the Cavs. The Bulls are now on the clock, and they're going to take shooting guard Juan Bajarin out of France, 6'5". His mid-range is dying in the modern NBA. Okay, the Pistons. They are going to take point guard DJ Stewart out of Duke, 6 foot. Three. Okay. I, I see a lot of point guards are going. I wasn't going to dip into the point guard because I like Lionel Howe. And the Knicks are going to take power forward Greg Brown, the third, six foot nine, out of Memphis. Okay. A couple of power forwards off the board. The Wizards now. Who are they going to play? They're going to take center Udoka Azubuki, seven foot, out of Kansas. Okay. 40 out of 50, 15, okay, that was pretty good. Now the Warriors are going to take small forward Terrence Shannon Jr., 6'7", out of Texas Tech. Okay, and now the Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's go, let's keep it moving, Adam Silver. They're going to take power forward Isaiah Jackson, 6'9", out of Kentucky. And now the Celtics. Who are they going to select here? Center Orlando Robinson, six foot ten out of Fresno State. Gotta love that. The Utah Jazz are now on the clock. And they're gonna take point guard Desheen Nix out of UCLA, standing at six foot four. He has great playmaking ability, supposedly. The Nuggets now are on the clock. We weren't gonna make any any uh oh we have a trade to announce so the nuggets are going to send the 22nd overall and marvin williams for mason Plumley and a 22 first round lottery protected pick we'll have to see how that all works out but the knicks are going to take this selection and get shooting guard moses moody out of arkansas six foot seven 196 and now they're on the clock again, and they're going to take point guard Jalen Suggs out of Gonzaga, six foot four, 196 pounds. Okay. The Clippers. Who are they going to select here? They're going to take power forward Isaiah Todd, six foot ten, out of Michigan. I can tell you the guys that I actually wanted are still on the board currently. Probably not going to happen though. The Celtics are going to take point guard Trey Mann out of Florida at six foot four, 185 pounds. His savvy and situational awareness. The Rockets here at pick number 26. They are going to take small forward Earl Timberlake, six foot five, out of Miami. That was the top guy on my list. Wouldn't think that he was going to fall all the way down to us. So good pick there for the Rockets. 
And now the Nets are on the clock, and they're going to take shooting guard Josh Christopher, six foot five, out of Michigan, highest vertical at the combine. Okay, the Hawks now, and who are they going to pick? They're not. They're actually going to make a trade. They're going to send this pick in a 23 first round top three protected ever to the Supersonics for Dwayne Dedman and Gerald Green. So the Sonics wanted to get back into this draft, and they are going to take point guard Cameron Thomas, six foot three out of LSU. Okay, let me see which way you're going there, Sonics. And now the Pelicans are on the clock. We just have two more picks to go. They're going to take point guard Tyrell Terry, six foot one out of Stanford. Okay, still not a guy on my list. And the Magic are going to take power forward Usman Garaba. Six foot nine out of Spain. He actually was not on my list, so we'll have to see. And now it is time for us to make a selection, so let's see who we end up taking. I think with this selection, we are going to go small forward with Tumani Kamara. I think that's going to be our best. He is six foot eight out of Georgia. Let's see what they got to say about it. Five star All American recruit coming out of high school. Kamara overcame the injuries and delayed the start of his freshman season. Fully recovered and showing growth every game. He is ready to go. That's what I'm talking about. I was kind of looking at our other guy, Sibley, but I think I can get him in the second round. So we'll keep on going. The 76ers are going to take Jaden Springer. And we are going to fast travel all the way to our next pick here in the second round. Now we head into our pick. Our power forwards were actually taken there in the middle second round. So we're really going to have to really figure out who we are going to take at this current moment. So I'll be right back with you after I make a decision. I think with this decision, we are actually going to go small forward CJ Walker, who can also play in that power forward spot. But 70 overall with C offense and D plus defense out of Oregon. I think this could be a very good pick for us. So that is going to be our selection. Let's see what they got to say. Yeah, we know we picked CJ Walker. Thanks. CJ Walker showed his range at the draft combine by making more college threes than any other small forward. So there you go. And the 76ers are going to end up taking Matthew Hurt, who was the other guy that I was planning on taking. It was either up between him and then CJ Walker. So I'm going to have to see how good this guy actually is. Thank you, Mark Tatum, for concluding the 2021 NBA draft. So taking a look at Matthew Hurt here, he actually was a 71 overall with C-plus offense, D on defense, laid-back personality. So he wouldn't have been a bad selection either, but between him and our boy C.J. Walker, not a lot of differences, except for C.J. Walker was draining threes all day at all of the workouts. So we filled up our bench in the draft. Now we're going to go to the rookie signing. And we're definitely going to sign to Mani Kamari. I really liked what he was all about. I wanted to see if the 76ers are going to sign Matthew Hurt. Because I wouldn't mind actually adding him, seeing what he has. And, okay, they declined him. So we might end up grabbing him and doing a little bit of a fight for our number two power forward position. I should probably sign CJ Walker, though, because that's what we're going to do. And now it is team and player options and actually see what kind of cap room we do have. I am going to bring back Shea Gilgis Alexander. Bridges, I don't think so. Cabby, yes. How we are going to take as well. Uh, Hazonia, we're going to just kind of let go. And Mikel Bridges as well. Even though they're pretty good bench players, but... You know, we need to go young to try to free up a little bit of cap space so we can make a good splash here in the offseason. That's what I'm thinking. So Paul George is actually going to be a free agent. Interesting. He could be a shooting guard that maybe we look into. Granted, he's 31, but wonder how much money. But Doncic, Trey Young, Aiton are all accepting. Anybody that's crazy declining at all? Okay, Julius Randle, power forward center, probably not. 
Josh Richardson, eh, probably not. But if we can make a pretty good splash with somebody else, Mikael Bridges, we already know we didn't want. I mean, granted, he had a broken leg and everything, but again, we want to we want to open up as much as we possibly can to head into free agency this year. So now it is qualifying time. We are going to extend a qualifying offer to Dane Tiggs, one year, one point five. That's pretty pretty high. Williamson. Mm. I don't know about him. I don't think we are going to extend one for him. Guess we could really just not extend it and sign them to cheaper deals. Malik Monk, no. No, Malik Monk is gone. Baylor, Tiggs, yeah, you're coming back. I think with uh, with those years, I, I think we need to, need to sign it so we don't lose them because they could possibly be our little bit of our future there and now moratorium so let's see who we have ready to go and see what kind of offers we can kind of put out there and hopefully we can get somebody signed up before free agency starts so we do have some big names at the top and two of them are actually unrestricted free agents which is the greek freak could you imagine if we were able to get a job or a deal done with the Greek freak? That would be insane. He is looking for about 44 mil a year, which is roughly the hold currently by Steven Adams. So maybe we have an opportunity. We might have to make some deals to end up making it fit. But really the question is, then what do we do? Do we start him at small forward and then move Porter to power forward? Do we start him in power forward? Does Cavi stay at center? Does Jalen Smith end up being our power forward number two? This could bring up a whole bunch of questions, but really it's shooting guard that is going to be the issue because of AC Baylor. I don't think he's quite ready to start, but I think we need to act at least go after the Greek freak if we can get him that would change the whole aspect then we will have somebody that maybe we can even match up on Ben Simmons even though it'd be a way different position change but maybe something that we can do to kind of shut down Ben Simmons a little bit or we can go Paul George who could be a shooting guard as well and I mean nothing too bad there he's actually expecting more money than the Greek freak so not sure if that's going to be I see Gobert down here is unrestricted Donovan Mitchell would be a nice piece but he is restricted so more than likely the Jazz are just going to sweep down underneath Tatum is restricted Collins De'Aaron Fox nobody wants all the deep though huh at 35 mil interesting because that's that could be a very good player for us as well Bradley Beal that might make sense for us actually because we do need a scorer and I mean defensively it's six foot five but again is he gonna be able to stop Ben Simmons I really don't know and then Steven Adams actually has no offers so not not bad there so we're gonna have a couple of decisions to make we did end up making a couple of offers. We actually ended up offering Bradley Beal to be our shooting guard, a four-year, $143.79 million deal. I think that could be huge. We also offered Giannis, but he's actually going to take the four-year, $174.24 million offer somewhere else, which we actually offered him a little bit more than that but he wants to go somewhere else, play somewhere else. I mean, I think that's fine for now. But again, this is moratorium, so who knows exactly what's going to happen. So in day two of the moratorium, we actually offered Steven Adams, since we weren't able to grab Giannis, a three-year, $62.37 million deal, which is roughly around 20 to 21 mil per year. I think that is going to be huge because now we can keep him Cleaning up the glass, we got Bradley Beal in the shooting guard spot. This team actually, I think, has gotten much 
better. So I and we actually still have three and a half million dollars in cap room if we need to sign any other backups. But I'm still looking for some trade offers for our man Van Vliet and also Looney. Because I think with Steven Adams being there, I think we're going to pretty much shut everything down. So we do have a very good offer here for Kevon Looney from the San Antonio Spurs. who are willing to give us two first round picks, but next year's 22 first round pick is going to be top five protected. It's possible they did have the first pick this year, but I think with Looney, we're pretty much just kind of, it's done and over with at this point with us getting into an agreement with Steven Adams for a couple more years. So I do think we are going to make this trade and good to go. Opens up a little bit more salary room. We also have a good trade offer here from OKC for Van Vliet. They're willing to give us two first round picks, one in 22 and one in 25. I think that's gonna be big going forward because our cap space is gonna start really kind of becoming small after these couple years since we are kind of managing SGA is gonna demand a pretty big offer next year and I mean our young guys if they continue to develop are going to demand some big ones as well but I do think we are going to take this away from OKC which is also a clipper unprotected first round so we will make this trade and see you later Van Vliet. So day three, we did not end up sending out any offers. I mean, I think we pretty much have everybody that we want currently. So I think this is where it's going to work out the best. So now we enter day one of free agency. I think we pretty much got the team that we need. We do have 19.8 mil in cap room. So if I see anybody that interests me, then I'm gonna dive in and give them an offer. This may be an unpopular opinion because we do have Michael Porter Jr. on the squad, but as of right now, Jason Tatum has no offers on the table, so we are going to offer him a four-year, $93.31 million contract, and it's going to be within what we have, so I think this is what we're going to do. Let's offer him, and if he rejects it, which he does immediately, has declined the offer, he's looking to make 30 mil. So we are gonna offer a contract once again to Jason Tatum since he has zero offers on the table and it's pretty much the last day. So we are going to offer this contract. He has declined it once again. Now we are going to attempt to get him to sign a one year $21.7 million contract since yet again, he has no offers on the table. He at least did not decline it this time, so we have an outside chance of getting Jason Tatum on this team as well. And hold your horses, oh, MG. Jason Tatum is coming to Baltimore on a one-year $21.7 million offer. I didn't really think that we would have a chance at him, but I mean, nobody was going out. Everybody was going after Paul George. So I have no problem signing him. That does make it very interesting though in our small forward position, because now Michael Porter is gonna have to go to the bench, but maybe he could be a six man of the year if he continues to develop and get better. But you can't pass up on Jason Tatum who had zero offers on the table. And now we are heading to player progression here and see how everybody has evolved. Jason Tatum is now a 91 overall. Look at all those A pluses. And actually decent perimeter defense as well. Good playmaking ability. So he is pretty good. I'm actually very excited. He's now our top overall player. SGA went up four overall. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. It's gonna be very interesting about trying to sign him next year with the limited cap space that we do have. Bradley Beal actually did not move up one overall, but his mid-game did go up to an A, maybe playing on the Wizards. Didn't work out for him, but we signed him to a pretty big deal. Michael Porter went up four. Look at his scoring, A, A, and A+. Plus. His defense also went up as well, so maybe he's starting to actually figure out how to start dominating, which would be great. 
And I mean, we have Tatum for this year. Do we end up signing Tatum next year? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Who really knows? It was just kind of a chance happening that nobody wanted to offer him a contract. So we swooped in and we got him. Steven Adams did start to regress a little bit. He did go down minus one. His physicality is going to a D plus or physical, whatever that is exactly. So not good there since we just signed him to a three year deal. But he's Steven Adams. Can't get mad at him. Jalen Smith went up three overall. His scoring really got a boost. His defense actually doesn't look too bad either. Cabby went up three overall as well to 78. I love this guy. And now he's probably going to fit in as our power forward starter as Jalen Smith is going to be on the bench. Lionel Howe went up five overall. He played great in that Sixers series. Very excited to see what he has. I am a little bit concerned about that 5'11 frame, but maybe he comes in and is a real good bench point guard for us. Tamani Kamari, we already know, is a 70 overall. CJ Walker is a 70 overall as well. So now that I think about it, I did not see AC Baylor or Dane Tiggs on there. I might have actually messed up a little bit because now we don't have that option. Maybe I can get them in free agency on some minimum contracts and a mid-level exemption, hopefully. But it's NBA Summer League time. Let's see where we end up finishing here. All right, so the Summer League tournament bracket, you can see the tiny little emblems. Go ahead, zoom that in there for me. We were actually 18. Not great at all, but we probably really don't have anybody that is really playing. Oh, we ended up beating Denver. Okay, fair enough. But we lost to, no, we beat Atlanta as well. I have no idea who Joe Nobody is. No idea. And actually, we ended up getting to the finals, or not the finals, the, what is that, the, can't even see, the semifinals. We didn't make it to the tournament finals. The Wizards actually ended up beating us, so 18th seed, whatever, doesn't mean anything. But we still can't win anything. That's just the way that it is. And now it looks like we head to the All-Star City selection, which it's going to be San Francisco. Okay, good for them. And now we are we're just auto-generating the rookies this year. And the 2K Hoop Summit. We're going to sim through this game. Do want to see the box score, though. What we have here... Towns was an absolute stud. How is this guy looking? Donnell Towns, small forward shooting guard, B plus, draft rank 15th. I mean, hopefully we're not that far behind. And then we also got Roberto Gonzalez, who's a B plus in six. So he's one of the top prospects there. Okay, and now we go to training camps. So we do have three available training camps, which is great untapped potential all the time and i mean as you see tatum and beal they're a pluses oh, that's not their potential their potential is over here a plus a a a plus a minus a captain gelly's a minus i do think that we do want to work on how get him up a little bit there so he will go up to a b plus so that is beautiful and what else do we have here? And I think Kamara, let's get him up. Get him up to, oh, wow. Okay, he's now at A minus. Did I read that wrong? Did I not go far enough over? No, it says B. What, what in the world just happened? Okay, well, we're gonna give Kamara one more untapped. He already attended that camp, so Hal did as well. Uh, do we go after Cabby to get him up a little bit more? Or do we work on CJ Walker? Hmm, no, I think I want to go with Cabin Gelly, our boy. Okay, before B+, plus, after A-, minus, but he was already an A- minus game. Okay, you're messing with my mind. And now we have to advance to the next season which we will continuously do here. I do want to see if AC Baylor is 
available and also Dane Tiggs before starting the season all teams must have 14 players ready so we have to sign a free agent to the minimum of 960 so do you want to have players sign for all teams with incomplete rosters no I want to sign for me because I don't think I'm at 14 let me see if I can get this figured out all right guys so i ended up checking the footage and i made a mistake well actually i didn't make a mistake but the ai actually renounced the rights on baylor and tiggs so that's why we had just a little bit more money to go after tatum i wouldn't have signed tatum a little bit more if i knew that they their rights were going to be renounced but it is what it is i do believe that we are going to get baylor and tiggs back next season so I'm thinking of some storylines. So if you guys have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. Some sort of out for the season kind of storyline, I think is what we're going to do because they're not being picked up by any teams. And I doubt that they will actually be picked up by any teams, but we are gonna get them on the team again next year. So we ended up having to sign a couple of veteran minimums slash rookie minimums. So we ended up signing Tariq Phillip here, who actually played for the Memphis Hustle. He's 28 years old, shooting guard, 67 overall. But we got him. We got Johnny Buford, the undrafted free agent out of St. Louis. Then we also got Vince Myers, the undrafted center out of Oklahoma State, is 66 overall. And then we also got Clifton Davidson, the free agent rookie out of Memphis. So that is going to fill out our roster. It's going to be very interesting for us. We're probably going to have a lot of crazy lineups and shifts and things like that. But I'll get it all worked out and we'll continue to win. But that's all we have time for today. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay frosty and I'll see you in the next episode. D-Night, out. They thought it was a game till I came back with that win over time. I've been